Are you building a country house and you constantly need to carry either boards or bricks or bags of cement? Are you interested in riding motocross bikes or quad bikes? Are you an avid fisherman and you need to deliver a boat with a motor either to Octuba or to the Karelian Lakes? This means that of all vehicle classes, a pickup is the best fit for you. And if at the same time you think that cars are German and all the rest, then why not turn your attention to the Volkswagen Amarok? Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles announced its intention to develop a reliable and durable pickup truck that will launch the brand's fourth line of commercial vehicles back in 2005. The Germans are serious people, they are not used to throwing words into the wind, and in the fall of 2008, at an exhibition in Hanover, a concept with the uncomplicated name VW Robust Pickup Concept was shown in the variant of a special car for rescue services, and a year later, in December 2009, the first pickups rolled off the assembly line of the Volkswagen plant in the Argentine city of Pacheco. It was originally planned that the car would be assembled not only in Argentina, but also at the brand's main plant in Hanover, but due to the financial crisis of 2009, the launch of new items in Europe was postponed, and this issue was returned only in 2012. Naturally, the model received its own name, Amarok. In Inuit mythology, Amarok is a supernatural being that appears to people in the form of a lone wolf. In addition, when choosing a name, the second associative layer was also taken into account, in the languages of the romance group, this name combines a more love, and rock, rock, stone, which should hint at the off-road talents of the car. At least, that's what the specialists of the consulting agency Interbrand, who participated in the choice of the name, assured. The novelty was distinguished by its spectacular and harmonious appearance, and this is not surprising. All the design work was supervised by the chief designer of the Volkswagen Group, Walter Maria de Silva. From a technical point of view, the car was a typical mid-size frame pickup truck. Front suspension independent, spring on double A arms, rear dependent on semi-elliptical springs. In the engine range, a 2.0 TSI petrol 4 with a capacity of 162 horsepower was originally proposed. And a whole range of 2-liter turbo diesel engines ranging from 121 to 180 horsepower. Either a 6-speed manual or an 8-speed classic automatic ZF8 HP could work with them. Drive rear, plug-in full, shiftable 4 motion, or permanent full, permanent 4 motion. We'll clarify right away that the versions with rear-wheel drive, as well as with a single cab, were not delivered to Russia. It is worth noting the absence of a lowering range in the transmission for versions with an automatic transmission. The German designers relied on a very short first gear for the ZF8 HP. Under normal conditions, the car starts off from the second gear. In cars with mechanics, it is possible to turn on the 4x4 low mode. In addition, there is the possibility of locking the rear differential, and in cars with permanent all-wheel drive, a self-locking center differential is used. In 2016, the car underwent a restyling, but we will focus on pre-styling versions. Today, such cars are sold on the secondary market at a price of 1 to 2.5 million rubles, which, in principle, corresponds to the price of a new UAZ Patriot or Geely Atlas. But in order to make the right decision, you should familiarize yourself with what the owners of Lone Wolves write in their reviews. Hate number five, paint, finishes, and twisted runs. Perhaps the first problem that a person who decides to purchase a VW Amarok on the secondary will face is not the best condition of the paintwork. The authors of very many reviews complain about the quality of the coloring. The quality of the metal and paint is complete junk. Rusting metal under the paint the paint is falling off paint is rubbish in the fifth year of life almost the entire car was repainted although it does not rust but the paint peels off very strongly paint peels off the stones first a small mark then a stain from a five ruble coin therefore i had to tint the hood the roof over the glass the left side painted by a specialist done with high quality but expensive amarok is overrated he is not worth his money, he does not hold out for metal, for paint. In general, many owners speak in the spirit of I like the car, 
but the painting could be better and complain that in the 5-7th year of operation, almost all cars already have a tired paintwork and body problems. Particularly affected are those that were operated, so to speak, for their intended purpose. The machine is combat, so sooner or later it will still be covered in abrasions and dents. For example, I didn't have a single living element left in the bodywork after scaffolding, motorcycles, and expeditions. I paint and move on. Plus, the aging of the paintwork also affects the overall impression. American large-sized counterparts look better over the years, and this one, like the old German, quickly loses its external freshness. It is worth considering this vulnerability for those who want to cover the cargo platform with a lid or a cab, which we usually call a kung, although this is incorrect if you put a kung, then through the foam, otherwise it peels off all the paint on the body. It is better to immediately glue the body on top around the perimeter. In addition to the body, the windshield also suffers. The large glass constantly catches stones. Once a year, I change the hull. There are also complaints that very quickly, literally after 30,000 kilometers, the leather begins to peel off and lose its marketable appearance, which is covered with the steering wheel and the gear selector handle. And another problem that the owners write about and which cannot be ignored is twisted runs. In our country, this act is not punished in any way, so everyone in sundry, even official dealers, are engaged in twisting mileage. Here one of the owners tells how he sold Amarok with a mileage of 180,000 kilometers, I handed it over to one official for trade-in, and it was estimated at 950,000, I took another car. Today I open the site, Appa, and my wolf is already on sale, all so polished, with mileage. 60,000. Damn, but you can't do that. Or another story, I was bought new in 2014 in the Sochi edition package, boldly, without questions or complaints, flew 160,000 kilometers in two years and was sold, after which they twisted the mileage two times and sold it with a plus of 200,000 rubles. But the real mileage is exactly the indicator that allows you to assess the likelihood of a need for serious repairs. So you should definitely study the service book carefully and measure the thickness of the paintwork. Love number five, indestructible energy intensive suspension. But expect some serious tricks on the part of the suspension as a whole is not worth it. The suspension is gold. The suspension is indestructible, especially at the rear. The reliability of the suspension is very good. Like me and all the Amarokovads whom I asked, the suspension is designed with a maximum margin of safety and therefore nothing happened to it at all during six years of operation. It does not even creak in any climatic conditions. It is no coincidence that the authors of the reviews call the pendant as one of the main advantages of the lone wolf. And it's not just about very high survivability, the suspension also provides a decent ride, including on the ground and on poor asphalt, it floats gently on paving stones and through low rails, the suspension perfectly works out bumps, very comfortable, sev on this car, I completely forgot about bumps, bumps pass at any speed. The car is elastic, not swinging, comfortable. Well, the rear springs, of course, throw up the stern, especially if there is a five-leaf version of the springs, designed for a ton of cargo. In any case, the VW Amarok suspension provides excellent road behavior, we'll talk about this later, and the car does not show a pronounced pickup effect, that is, the owner's desire to constantly carry a concrete block weighing 300 kilograms in the back just for the normal operation of the rear suspension. Hate number four, rear sofa and head unit. In general, the authors of the reviews quite positively evaluate the internal volumes of the VW Amarok. There is more space inside the car than in a conventional passenger car, and the comfort of the front seats is somehow not even discussed as a matter of course. A somewhat more complicated situation is observed with the assessment of the space on the back sofa. On the one hand, the sofa is quite wide, and four adults can fit on it in a peak position, in a critical situation. Everything is fine even in a situation where only children are sitting on the second row. It is spacious enough in the back, there are child seats, and the children are quite comfortable. But children tend to grow up, and that's when the situation ceases to be blissful. One of the authors of reviews on the internet wrote so directly, there are very few cons, but there is one that I grew up with my children, T, 
10 centimeters of the cabin length are not enough. Although the rear seats are comfortable on their own, I would like to slightly increase the backrest tilt. Basically, those who are forced to carry adults they're right about the lack of comfort on the second row, and for long distances, there is only one minus these are the rear seats for a very long distance. What else in the cabin causes some irritation among the owners? Perhaps only the head unit, among the shortcomings is an outdated head unit, there is no internet and no Bluetooth connection. Navigation maps have to be updated once a year, and for updating you have to visit the dealership. Naturally, many people prefer to simply spit on the presence of built-in navigation and hang a smartphone or tablet with a navigation program on the dashboard or windshield, since here you yourself can choose the most suitable option for your tasks. Love number four, passenger car comfort and handling. Most Wolves owners are very pleased that the Amarok is one of the few pickup trucks that can match the ride comfort and handling of cars and crossovers. This is all the more important because so many pickup truck owners purchase their cars precisely as Jeep substitutes, not planning at all for commercial use as light trucks. We have already touched on the issue of comfort in the cabin, and so, the only thing that the owners of the pre-styling VW Amarok regret is the lack of lumbar support adjustment, by the way, this request was satisfied during the restyling. The authors of the reviews assess the driver's landing quite positively, in Amarok you sit like in a passenger car, only very high, if you sit in the L200 and Hilux like in a Gazelle, then here you sit like in a passenger car. The authors are quite satisfied with the interior trim, yes, of course, oak plastic, but it all looks very even. Native radio with a screen, camera, multifunction steering wheel, instruments, like all folks, a lot of niches for storage and cup holders, Alcantara seats have now become my standard for finishing, it's not cold in winter, it's not hot in summer, you don't slip, plastic, though oak, but if you do not touch it, then it is definitely pleasant to the eye. But the authors of the reviews addressed the behavior of the car on the road most of all. Firstly, I didn't come across a single complaint about the dynamic capabilities of the pickup truck. The speakers are enough for the eyes, 10.8 to 100 quite. On the highway, it is not inferior in speed to foreign cars. There are absolutely no complaints about the operation of the tandem turbo engine and the classic 8-speed ZF fluid mechanics. However, if only good things are written about the box, then the 2-liter turbo engine as a whole does not cause either negativity or special enthusiasm. 2.0 bit D is a controversial unit. It's kind of small, but it's enough. It's like you always wanted more, but he always manages. In a word, a typical commercial vehicle engine, the power of which is exactly enough for it to perform its task, drove it, pulled it out, drove it, but so that the driver did not particularly relax. But the statements of the owners of Amarok about handling and stability on the road are extremely enthusiastic. The car is very well controlled. The feeling that you are driving not in a pickup truck, but in a passenger car, it steers like a crossover, enters the turns like glued, the rolls are minimal, confidently holds the road and enters turns at speed, rutting is not felt at all, when traveling on long distances you don't get particularly tired, on the highway it's no worse than the Audi A6, in the city it feels like you're driving a regular sedan, you just sit high. Manageability at a height, nimble, sharp, not roll at all. In a word, when the owners write in the reviews that the Amarok is definitely better than other pickups on the market in terms of driving comfort, they have certain reasons for this. Moreover, many write that the Amarok surpasses the popular crossovers of the SUVC segment both in terms of general and driving comfort. Before that, there was a Honda CRV, which is also a good car. But Amarok is better. No other car that I had before had such stability on the road, space, comfort. It is like a fortress on wheels, like a house. I compare it with my previous Toyota RAV4 Amarok is much more comfortable. And it is also very important that Amarok provides excellent comfort of movement not only on highways, but also on primers and graders, on tracks that have not been cleared after a snowfall. In a word, when the authors promise in the reviews that you will enjoy the trip to any road and in any weather, they have every reason to do so. Hate number three, noise isolation. But the acoustic comfort, according to the authors of the reviews, leaves much to be desired. 
There is no sound insulation in the car, but we fixed it. Now it's a little better than in Tiguan, and this is acceptable for me, one of the owners writes in his review. Of the minuses, not very good noise isolation. Noise isolation is not very good, others echo him. Here, however, it should be noted that for many cars, the main noise is produced by tires rolling along the road. In the case of the VW Amarok, things are somewhat different. According to the owners, the noise from the road practically does not penetrate into the cabin, most likely due to the frame structure, but the sound insulation of the engine compartment is clearly insufficient, and the roof, according to them, sounds like a drum. In fact, not so much has been written about the problem of noise in the reviews, but many people point out not the best sound insulation among the serious shortcomings of this car. Love number three, carrying capacity. Why were pickups invented? A strange question, naturally, in order to carry small loads. Small, of course, by the standards of adult trucks. So the owners of even such a light truck as Amarok, the creators of which tried to bring it as close as possible in comfort to a passenger car, consider its carrying capacity as one of the main advantages of the car. A whole elk can easily fit in the body, roomy to disgrace, well, it's a pickup truck. Many among the advantages mention the possibility of transporting oversized cargo, however, for this you need to have an open cargo platform. What is an open platform? This is, firstly, excessive aerodynamic resistance, and hence increased fuel consumption on the highway. Secondly, it is the inability to ignore any valuable things. Thirdly, it is the need to regularly shovel snow out of the body during the winter months. All these problems can be solved by installing a cover or a cab, but then the possibility of transporting oversized items is lost. Someone will object that there is such a thing as covers folding according to the principle of roller shutters. Yes, there are, but they have their own problems. For example, in winter they tend to freeze and jam. So here everyone chooses the option that suits their needs. Even a covered loading platform, whose internal dimensions are 1,555 by 1,620 by 505 millimeters, makes it possible to load more than a cubic meter of cargo. In classic SUVs, in order to accommodate such a load, you need to fold the rear row of seats. The owners testify, we load in Karelia to the fullest a boat, a 9.9 .9 horsepower engine, a large tent, a tent, a kitchen, a camp stove for a bath, refrigerator, generator, chainsaw, and even a cat. Everything fits, there is almost always something in the back, and summer fishing rods, scooters, bicycles, and in winter snow scooters and tubes. Moreover, I threw them there and forgot whether they were wet or dirty, it doesn't matter. Or here is such an interesting statement, when I bought it after Discovery 3, I thought it would be hard. And as a result, it turned out to be much more convenient to use the body than the trunk. It is interesting that the load has little effect on the dynamics and controllability. The car does not particularly react to the weight, whether it is a ton or empty acceleration worsens by half a second, and consumption increases by a liter. Well, for those who use Amarok to deliver ATVs, motorcycles and snowmobiles to the place, there is nothing left but to use the open body. The owners write that a quadric or three motorcycles are placed in the body, and the rings in the body for fixing the load allow it to be pulled not only to the floor, but also to the front wall. That's just a snowmobile without an additional platform in the back does not fit. However, there is another way. You can use a trailer, especially since the Amarok is an excellent tractor. As the owners write, the traction properties are generally excellent. The two-ton trailer is very confident. I lifted the boat on a low slipway on a very steep slipway the car didn't notice, can drag the yacht without much effort. Hate number two, urban and winter problems. On the one hand, many owners express dissatisfaction with the way Amarok behaves in the city. My opinion, if you live in the city, you need to have a second car, a truck it is a truck, an everyday city life like a hippopotamus on the dance floor. And this despite the fact that, 
in principle, the Wolf can be called a very maneuverable car, at least, according to the owners, you can turn around on a non-two-lane road in one go, without turning on the reverse gear and not driving to the side of the road, since the angle of rotation of the front it is just as many wheels, if not more, than many large SUVs. But if the package does not include rear parking sensors, then problems are possible. It is difficult to reverse into the parking lot in the city. Additional difficulties in looking back are created by a plastic grill on the rear window from the outside, which protects the glass from oversized cargo placed on the trunk lid. Sometimes you have to go out and evaluate the dimensions of the parking space or ask someone to correct it. At the same time, just a couple of lines later, the same person writes, the turning radius for such a giant is small, it was more difficult to park on the Citroen C5. Alas, in the reviews you can find many references to the problems that owners may encounter during the cold season. In principle, all diesel engines do not like cold very much, and, in theory, a Webasto preheater installed at the factory should radically solve the cold start problem. Alas! Moreover, it is impossible to install heating. The tank, fuel supply pipes are plastic, which is dangerous to heat. There are certain problems with the heater itself. There, too, everything is made up, the owners complain in their reviews. It will not turn on if the car's brain thinks that the fuel is less than 200 kilometers away. This parameter can be changed, but only for the kilobins. The second feature is the algorithm of work. If it's stupid to start the engine at minus 15 and below, then you can stand and wait for it to warm up until the summer, until it gets warmer outside, Webasto turns off when there is little fuel in the tank, and when you pour it, it may not turn on. According to the authors of the reviews, this problem is solved only through a diagnostic scanner, and dealers ask for a minimum of 1,600 rubles for this service. Naturally, the owners evaluate this as frankly ripping off. There are also certain problems with visibility associated primarily with the operation of the wipers. The wipers always don't clean, they get iced up, etc. This assembly is clearly just taken from a passenger car and does not fit such a glass slope. If it is colder than plus 5 outside, the rain sensor lives its own life. At sub-zero temperatures, the wipers have two modes, on and off, so on a long trip they either scrub non-stop, or the right hand is always on duty, it controls the wiper. Hate number one, cost of operation and vulnerabilities. We have to admit that on the forums of the owners of the VW Amarok there is a constant felling. Can the Wolf be considered a reliable car? Some, foaming at the mouth, prove that it is possible and necessary, a reliable high quality car. Over the years of operation, it did not need and does not need repairs. I only changed the central lock of the left front door. I know the owners of Amarox who have traveled more than 500,000 kilometers without major repairs. Others object no less fiercely. I owned from 2012 to 2019 cool car, if not for constant breakdowns. For the last two years, I was afraid to use it because it could stall or not start over the years of ownership repair costs amounted to 400,000 rubles this is a recuperator a gearbox I changed the turbine twice twice I overhauled the engine when I sold it I breathed a sigh of relief it all started with a starter bulkhead 15,000 rubles and along the way the replacement of the vacuum pump gasket 5,000 rubles plus work 8,000 rubles and then multiple investments rained down, as a result of which it all ended with a broken camshaft and sale, because at that time there was no strength and money to do it, and I didn't want to. So who is right? The truth, as you know, is somewhere nearby. Even owners who are quite loyal to the model admit that at the turn of 200 to 300,000 kilometers one should expect serious problems with the main units, primarily with the turbine and cylinder head. The turbine and injectors for any car are not cheap, so what next? Any unit has a service life, but here they serve about 200 to 250,000 kilometers. Today, the mileage is 301,000 kilometers. I am the only owner, so I drove all these kilometers myself. The turbine now orders a long life. The oil consumption has gone. A friend has the same 2013 automatic 
mileage 270,000, in the same hands, and he didn't do anything with it at all. However, the oil consumption also went, and also the turbine, their head is covered with cracks due to local overheating after 300,000 kilometers, and welding is not enough there of replacing the cylinder head, but it costs, I would say, not so cheap. At the same time, every 80 to 100,000 kilometers it is recommended to preventively change the timing belts and drive belts of attachments along with the rollers, otherwise a break is possible with the inevitable replacement of the cylinder head, and this is at least 200 to 250,000 rubles. Of the other standard breakdowns, they call the failure of the air conditioning compressor and steering rack. There are a lot of references to electrical problems, electrical problems are the main problem. The car was at the service more often than the Mercedes SLK 2012 or Chevrolet Tahoe 2016, much more often, and it rode 10 times in tow. Wedged the lock of the gas tank hatch, the heating of the mirrors burned out, the most unpleasant thing is the steering column switch, because the second fuse from the bottom left burns out, and all the electrics turn off, the engine stalls. And if you don't know which fuse, then on large highways where you can't pull over to the side of the road, emotions will be over the edge. At the same time, the owners consider the costs of maintenance, current repairs and operation in general to be quite high, as well as the cost of original spare parts. It turns out a lot, because here is oil, here is a headlight, here is a shock absorber, here is a winch, is being typed. There are also wild extremes in this model, a radiator of 35,000, a fan of 50,000, a mirror of 12,000, a taillight of 12,000, a set of rear disc brakes instead of drums, 55,000, shock absorbers in a circle, 40,000, at tires, 48,000, machine expensive to repair. A grenade is about 20,000 rubles, and only the original, many of its spare parts are its own and only originals, the repair of the box costs 70,000 rubles, but this is with friends, I get 150,000 rubles a year for repairs and tuning, I drive 30,000 kilometers a year, exactly 10 liters of diesel, that is, another 150,000 for fuel, a total of 10 rubles slash kilometer. We drove 100 kilometers, we laid out a thousand. By the way, complaints that it is difficult to find non-original spare parts or they simply do not exist, the originals are expensive, and therefore you have to look for the necessary parts and assemblies at disassembly, and this, as you yourself understand, is still that lottery, are quite common. The only thing that consoles the pain of parting with hard-earned funds in the case of buying original spare parts is that they can be called resource, capable of leaving as much as the unit installed at the factory. And yet there is some contradiction. On the one hand, the owners assure that the only guarantee of successful operation is timely and high quality maintenance, and preferably not according to the automaker's schedule, but more often, every 10 to 12,000 kilometers. On the other hand, there are a lot of stories about the low quality work of official services, and with clearly inflated bills, when buying a faint, forget about the officials. Checked. And in any case, when buying an Amarok with a mileage of more than 100 to 150,000 kilometers on the secondary market, you should be prepared for serious financial investments. Love number one, car for the economy and adventure. It is striking that the owners who bought the Amarok as a G substitute expressed the most negative comments. Here they first of all complain about the inconvenience of operating this car in the city. They quite reasonably object. Is it hard in the city? So this is a pickup truck, actually, a car for specific purposes, and not for driving around the city. With such logic, it's hard for an airplane in the city, you'll put a hell of a lot on the avenue, if you carry equipment, building materials, drive long distances as a savage to nature, then this car is right for you. If you are trying to buy an Amarok like a big Jeep, but cheaper, then I don't recommend it right away. The most important thing, a pickup should be compared with another pickup, and not with a passenger car or a Jeep. The Jeep will be more comfortable in terms of the rear suspension, brakes, equipment, seats, trunk. In short, if you don't use the side, then don't torture the wolf and yourself. Take a regular Jeep Cruzac, Pajaric, Touareg, Discovery, XC90 or on what else have you watched there, and they will all be softer, faster, quieter, and more comfortable for every day. 
but those who initially understood why they needed a pickup truck evaluate the car purely positively if you were sitting in other mid-sized pickups then immediately appreciate the spacious interior of the volkswagen amarok this is a comfortable car for long distance travel and not a workhorse made according to the principle it will do for a pickup truck i can't complain about the car and i won't i took tourism construction for certain purposes lived up to expectations i still go as a matter of fact all this determines the optimal use of the vw amarok during this time it has reached the crimea sochi abkhazia kola Terebrka. i drive a motocross moto a standing jet ski a boat and snowballs on a trailer i use it for construction when petrovich does not deliver plus a little bit every day since there is only one car this car makes you want to travel more and more, and its potential allows you to aim at distant points on the map without thinking about the complexity of the path and the condition of the road surfaces on the route. Together we walked along many roads of mainland Russia, Crimea, Kola, Middle and Ribiki, the Caucasus, Georgia, Armenia, Iran. Even if a person is lazy, this handsome man makes him lead an active life with his appearance in the family, hobbies for bicycles, SUP boards, kayaks, skiing, fishing appeared to everyone who loves extreme sports with comfort, the owner of country cottages, fishermen hunters, owner's business connected with endless logistics, I wholeheartedly recommend Amarok. This workhorse helped us out with firewood to the bathhouse, with the delivery of building materials long and oversized, pulled out stuck fellow travelers in Karelia from the trough, brought goods to the store and to the shopping mall terminals, and never, partly thanks to the caring and continuous care of her husband, did not let us down for fishing slash hunting. The car is almost perfect. For work, if a little to modify the fastening of the cargo in the back, it's also quite for itself. But off-road extreme is not so simple. On the one hand, many owners are delighted with the cross-country ability. Everything is in order with the cross-country ability. It will pass anywhere in the winter. It crawls along the snow one meter deep, like on rails, with the locks turned on. I never got stuck on it, but and in the swamps and forests did not go on purpose. I traveled on mountain primers with stones, and a couple of times in the Astrakhan region I practiced on floods and flooded Eriks. I skidded on standard tires, but drove through. Others warn, if you are going to the wilds, stock up on a piece of rails that weigh for 200 kilograms. It won't hurt in the trunk, otherwise run after the tractor. Indeed, no one uses the VW Amarok in the trophy, since it is very difficult to modify them, the suspension travel is small, the dimensions are large, and the rear axle is unloaded, this is the main trouble in winter in deep snowdrifts and when trying to storm a snowy field. So his element is to quickly, comfortably, and in style take you to where SUVs will be dishonored and lose bumpers.